In this video, the AT89S52 microcontroller is programmed using assembly to generate square waveforms using built-in timers. The AT89S52 microcontroller has three 16-bit timers, timer 0, timer 1, and timer 2. In this video, we'll focus on timer 0 and timer 1. Timer 0 and timer 1 has two 8-bit registers, the timer low register and the timer high register. These two registers are used to store the 16-bit initial count value, where the low byte of the count is stored in this register and the high byte is stored in this register. And there are two special function registers associated with timers. We have the timer control register and the timer mode register. This is the timer mode SFR, where these four bits are related to timer 0, and these four bits are related to timer 1. The gate bits are assumed logic don't care in this video, and a 0 will be assigned to them. C or T means counter or timer. A value of 0 means timer, a value of 1 means counter. And these two bits determine the mode of the timer. We have four modes. In this video, we will focus on mode 1, where timer is used as a 16-bit timer. The interrupt enable register is used to enable the timers. So this bit here will enable timer 0, and this bit will enable timer 1, and this will enable timer all. This is the timer control register, where these four bits are related to the timers. TR0 means timer 0 run. When set, timer 0 will be turned on. When clear, timer 0 will be turned off. TF0 is timer 0 overflow flag. And it is set by the microcontroller when timer 0 overflows. And the same applies for TR1 and TF1. Timer in mode 1 means that we have a timer that will count from 0 to 65,535. And then on the next count, an overflow interrupt will occur, and the interrupt service routine will be executed. And then the counter is reset, and the process continues. The timer clock frequency is the crystal clock frequency divided by 12. The reason for this division is that one machine cycle of the microcontroller requires 12 clock pulses. The crystal clock used in this video runs at 11.0592 MHz. If we divide this by 12, we get the timer clock frequency, which is 921.6 kHz. So the time per count is the reciprocal of this, which is 1.085 microsecond. And the total time it takes to count from 0 all the way to the maximum count is 71.1 millisecond. So if we load the timer uh, registers with this uh, initial value 0000, it means that the timer will count from 0 all the way to the maximum, and every 71.1 millisecond overflow interrupt occurs. We can reduce the total time, which is the maximum, by introducing what is called a delay in the count, which is then used to determine the base number that will be stored inside the timer registers. The next example will demonstrate this. In this example, we'll be programming timer 0 to run in mode 1 as a 16-bit timer. The objective is to generate a 1 kHz square wave at pin port 1.0 of the microcontroller. So in other words, we need to find the base number, which is a 16-bit value, that we store inside the timer 0 register to give us at the output pin a 1 kHz square wave. We start with the waveform period, which is the reciprocal of the frequency, and in this case it's 1 millisecond. Then we need to calculate the delay time, which is the time it takes for the overflow interrupt to occur, which is half of the period, and in this case it's 0.5 millisecond. Then we calculate the timer clock, which is the crystal clock frequency divided by 12, and here we have 921.6 kHz. 
then we find the timer cycle time which is the reciprocal of the timer clock and in this case it's 1.085 microsecond then we find the delay count which is the delay time divided by the timer cycle time and we get 461 of course we take the nearest whole number so the base number would be 65535 minus this delay count which gives us this value we translate it into hexadecimal and save it inside the timer zero register and this is the circuit diagram used to generate a 1 kilohertz square wave at the output of port uh, P1.0 which is connected to a scope this is the assembly code used to generate the 1 kilohertz uh, square waveform so we start with the origin directive and then we jump to label main so that we skip this part related to timer 0 inside uh, the routine main the first thing we do is to set timer 0 for mode 1 by programming the timer mode register then we store within the timer 0 registers the base number which we calculated in the previous example and then we initialize timer 0 and then we start timer 0 and here we have an indefinite uh, loop to do nothing so that timer 0 is working in the background during the run of the indefinite loop when timer 0 overflow interrupt occurs the program will jump immediately to the vector address of timer 0 which is defined here and then we call the interrupt service routine labeled ISR which is here inside the interrupt service routine we stop timer 0 and then we store once again the base number in the registers of timer 0 and then we toggle the pin port 1.0 and then we start timer 0 and then we return from interrupt which will come to this instruction here which is a jump instruction to label again which is back to the indefinite loop and the process is repeated this is the signal on the scope and you can see that the frequency is 970 Hertz so there's a 3% error from the nominal frequency value in this demonstration we have a square wave running at the lowest possible frequency which is approximately 7 Hertz the maximum frequency we can get is approximately 30 kilohertz in a future video timer 2 of the AT89 S52 microcontroller will be programmed for input capture of an external event thank you for watching